read John 19. Verse 26. Verse 26. Write worry not. John 19, verse 26. John 19, verse 26, it says, uh, uh-huh. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples, the disciple whom he loved, standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look at our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was on the cross with pains. And the woman, the mother, was standing there. And Mutsuadi Ma Naimi Anamo. You know, it is easy for you to cry when your mother is watching you, when you are in pain. But Jesus says, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mom. Jesus here directed, say, I'm no longer your son now. I'm disconnected with you. I have an assignment to do. If we read there, you will see that he never say, Mama, I have not done this. He never wanted to tell anyone, I have not done this. I'm feeling pain. This is a dishonest thing I'm expressing. When the woman was crying, Jesus could not cry. The two things that were supposed to have forced Jesus to cry was the mother, how the mother was feeling, and the pains he was experiencing. But he says, I'm not your mom. You, this one is your mom. And they went away. He never wanted to entertain any worry. When we read Luke 23, Luke 23, verse 34. Verse 34. Luke 23. I want to give you scriptures. So you read, speak with me. Luke 23. Verse 34. Verse 34. Yes. It says, mm-hmm. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Can you, can you hear that? When they were crucifying him, just read 33, it says what? 33 says, uh-huh. And when they had crucified him, and when they had come to the place called Calvary, yes, There, they crucified him. Uh And the criminals, one on the right hand and the other Uh on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Here, Jesus, when he is failing to worry, he was able to forgive. Jesus was supposed to be saying, why do you put me among the criminals? Why, why you didn't put me aside? They were declaring him as a very serious criminal. When they were busy putting nails on his hands, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. What, what is worry? Is to feel anxious. To feel anxious. Or troubled. About an actual or potential problem. Just to feel anxious. Or troubled. 
Because of the situation experiencing. When Jesus was experiencing so no, nails entering his bones, he was able to forgive. He who cannot worry is able to forgive. If you carry on worrying, questioning why this happened to you, you are bound to sin. Because remember, the crucifixion of Jesus was for all of us to come to God. In other words, the same crucifixion of you is for your own harvest. When you go through all tribulations and trials, it's for your own harvest. Can you tell your neighbor, whatever you are facing, don't worry about it. Whoever is troubling you, don't worry about him or her. Is for what? This is a potential harvest. It's for victory that God wants to give you. Whatever happens to you, it has been allowed. If you are hearing me say amen. Let's read Matthew 27 verse 46. I'm talking about Jesus here. 27, Matthew 27, verse 46. Jesus never get worried. Jesus Can you just read there, Mama? Matthew 27, verse 46. Uh -huh. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I want to tell you what Jesus was doing there. His concern was his relationship with God. Jesus' worry was based on his relationship with God. He wanted to focus on him. When he's going through all, he tried to maintain his relationship. When the sin was coming to him, covering the whole earth with darkness, when he looked up, he could not see the Father. This shows that whatever they were doing, he was seeing the Father. And he never wanted his Father's eyes to look aside. When he see that his father was looking aside and he could not see him, he asked him, Oh Lord, Eli, 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 why have thou forsaken me? I want to be with you. When everything I'm facing. Listen, he who overcome well will be able to establish his relationship with God. If you want to overcome your worry, check your relationship with God, you will overcome. Worry about that only. When you do that, you make worry to worry about itself. You make doubt to doubt itself. When Satan starts to rise questions about your challenge that you are facing, you look up that you look at the problem. So I want to remain constant with him. I'm not looking at the pain. He was supposed to be saying, Father, I'm feeling pains. Heal me. But I want to die here. Oh, make me not to feel pain. He said, don't forsake me. I need you even in this time. If you are hearing me say, John 19 verse 28. John 1928. Yeah. John 1928. My Lord shows that he worries not. Read. 
-huh. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, yes. that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Can you hear that? Amen. When he says that now everything that they've done, they've done. He says that they've lifted him. He says that the pains were oozing. Everywhere. There's nothing they are standing. He challenged them. And say, hey, I thirst. What is it that you want to do more? Truly, they did the worst. He, he, he never worried. He wanted to see what they will do. He says, I thirst. And the Bible says, read. Now, a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a hesop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. Can you hear that? Jesus here never complained to them. I'm in pain. Why are you doing this? The Bible says, when you see that all is fulfilled, he says, I thirst. Look, they take a sponge and <inaudible> fill it with <inaudible> so wine. These people were even. They want him to die very quick. They want him to cry. That's the work of the enemy Satan. But when he received it, he said, it is finished. I can see they can't do anything now. I can see I have to be glorified. I'm here to tell you that your enemy is limited. That's why your enemy is limited. They will fight you but there will be a place where they can't do anything. There will be a place where your enemy cannot go forward. Cannot reach forward. They don't know what to do with him. Just know that it's time to be glorified. I don't know if you're hearing that. Look at this verse that we're reading now. But let's go to Luke 23 verse 46. When Jesus was praying, he said, Father, in thy hands I commit my spirit. Can you read that verse 46? Man? And when Jesus has cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Did you hear that? Jesus here, he was still connected with his father. He knew why he was there. But I understood him. If we read the book of John, John chapter 16, verse 23, John 16, verse 23, verse 23, it says, it says, 32 to 33. Yes. Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes. yes. Has now come that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Did you hear that? Amen. Read, carry on. These things I have spoken to you, mm. that in me, you may have peace. Ah, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Did you hear that verse? Amen. Here, it says, take notice. An hour is coming. And it is arrived. You need to have a notice. Oh you need to recognize 
when things are happening, you know, uh, this is what the Lord said. He has already revealed this. Listen, when that hour happened, they will run away and you will be left alone. The same scripture can be applied to yourself. There will be a time where people will run away from you and you'll be left alone. The Bible says, cheer up. You are not alone. You are with the Father God. Sometimes when things are so tough, the people are called well-wishers. They run away and leave you. And they begin to talk at the distance. But don't forget, you are not alone. Can, can you tell I'm not alone? The Father is with me. It is very dangerous to laugh at the one who fails or the one who got an attack. Because he is not alone. Sometimes when challenges happen, we think, why these things are happening? I'm here to tell you, your God will be more visible when you are alone than when you are with majority. Can you tell me your God is more visible when you are alone than when you are with majority. When you have people, they normally claim your success. They claim your victory. They say they've assisted you. They've assisted you. I'm here to tell you. It looks like things are so tough. Worry not. I say, worry not. You are not alone. I said, this year you are not alone. The mercy of God will visit you. Tell him, I'm not alone. I'm with my God. The mercy of God will visit me. Can you hear Jesus told them before time? Even us now we know from the scriptures that we are not alone when we are challenged. Uh, you know, sometimes where you are working, you will, see, you will see segregation. Sometimes in the family is the same. God is watching you. When God is looking at you, you will see people start to misbehave. People start to be exposed. Don't worry about them. God is watching you. God bless you. Let's look at another scripture. Yes. Luke 12. Luke 12. Verse 22. Verse 22. These scriptures you know, but I want us you know, to know that victory is your portion. You are, you are worrying about what God has already organized. God has already given you. You are worried about promotion. You have it already. You are worried about challenge. Already you have overcome that challenge. You are worried about what the devil is doing. Look beyond that. Victory is your portion. Can you read Mama verse 12? Then he said to his disciples, uh -huh. Therefore I say to you, yes. do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Did you hear that? Read that verse again. Mama. Then he said to his disciples, yes. Therefore I say to you, mm -hmm. do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, mm. what you will put on. Uh -huh. Carry on. Life is, is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. So, meaning that as long as you are alive, as long as you feel, as long as you are alive, anything can happen. As long as you feel, and you know, you worry, worry tells you, think Pilar. about today and, and tomorrow. tomorrow. But worry cannot take you to the future. 
Worry is there to blindfold you. Not to see the future. Because if you can see the future, you won't worry about what to wear. You won't worry why you don't have money. Because God is about to give you what you are crying for. If you are hearing me say it. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. He was speaking and saying, hey, do not worry about clothes. Do not worry about food. I just want to tell you something. Right? I don't think we are so wise enough because most of the time, even when we have 10 million, how much do we eat it? Yeah, because look at your salary. How much are you eating? How much are you eating? How much are you using for clothes? For your body. We are so much on money. How to get it. How to be better. But after you have eaten this man, like now when I look at you, I don't see conflicts here. I can't see conflicts when I look at you. Whether you have eaten McDonald's, spare, spare, or what, I can't see that. You don't look at your neighbors. Ask your neighbors, what have you eaten today? Or what are you going to eat after this? I, I, I already saw something that makes me to laugh. You know the people who go to restaurant, they become excited when they were going there. Check them when they come there. They will be going like this. <laughs> they will be going like this. Because after they have destroyed the food, that the same food makes them very weak. When they say, we are going out, you see them doing like this. Looking around, see them when they come back. Ask them, where do you come from? But they can tell when they are going, but they won't tell when they come from. Because it really, we are trying to proud ourselves by food. Proud ourselves by the clothes. Many young people, they do that. They tell which label, label is that. label is that. And this label does not even make you better. Yes, many clothes that are very expensive, when you wear them, you become ugly. Just go to Pep Store and you wear something. No one will know, is it from Pep Store? Until you tell them. Accept yourself. Tell them, accept yourself. How many of you go to accept themselves from today? Accept yourself. Don't wear to show others. Don't do anything to show anyone. So if you don't have, worry not. Enjoy yourself and be yourself. Amen. Look at the, just read again, Mama. The same verse. Uh, consider what? The ravens. Okay, we'll go down. Uh -huh. It says, consider the ravens, uh -huh. for they neither sow nor reap which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Yes. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Mm. And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, worry is useless. Isn't it? Amen. This scripture shows you that when you worry, Even it is worry, useless because it doesn't add anything to us. Okay? Carry on reading, Mama. Uh -huh. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Yes. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. How much more will he clothe you? 
Oh, you of little faith. Mm. Did you hear that? Amen. Just read that verse again. 28. Mm. If then God so clothes the grass, mm. which today is in the field, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, yes. how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Carry on. And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. Mm. For all these things, the nations of the world seek after, and your father knows that you need these things. Listen to this. Your father, I wanted exactly. to come there, knows that you need these things. Your father is the provider. If he's able to take care of the grass, if he's able to take care of the bears, your father knows how to take care of it. Your father knows. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 6, he, 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 he knows what you need before you pray. Before you pray, he knows what you need. In other words, our prayer does not provoke God to give us anything. Our prayer does not provoke God to give us anything. He knows what you need. I don't know if you are hearing me. God knows what you need. You just live for him. And stop worrying because what worry cannot be add anything. anything. Just bring depression, you know, stress, stress, questions. Why I'm facing Why all this? Your father, mind about you. Let me just prophesy someone else. This year, what you are worrying about, it won't come after six months. It must come this week. I say it must come this week. Can you receive it this week? Listen. When you want to see that God is working, be expected. Just be ready for it. Something is about to happen here. Something. You tell yourself, there is something. You stop worrying. You stop questioning. There is something that is about to happen. You become excited. Before you see it, you will please God because you are a man or a woman of faith. I say you are a man or a woman of faith. Sing it before it happens. Enjoy it. Become excited of it. If you are hearing me say it. There was a day I was searching for a farm. And then when I was saying I want a farm, I, want a farm, I was thinking about my cows. I said, I want a farm, I want a farm. Someone called me and said, Do you want a farm? I said, oh, I never spoke with you about it. I said, I buy you a farm. I said, uh -huh. So no, start to search for a phone. I realize that the moment when you start to be excited, that not to question how, I don't know if you are hearing me. You don't, you don't need to question how are you going to get it. You just say, I have it. I have it. You know, when I was thinking, I began to say it. I have a farm now. I have a farm. The Lord has given me a farm. Oh, it didn't take many days. I received a call. Man of God, do you want a farm? Yes. No, me, I can buy it. Search for it. And I says, oh, God is faithful. Because God knows your heart. I don't know if you are hearing me. I pray that it must happen to you. I pray that it must happen to you in the name of Jesus. It is possible with God. I say it is possible with God. What is impossible with men is possible with God. Stop questioning. Looking at your pocket. Stop questioning. Looking at your work. Stop questioning. What is it that the Lord will do? He's aware of your abilities. He will do beyond your abilities. If you are hearing me say, 
Your father knows what to do. You know, this scripture makes me to stop worrying. Your father knows what to do. Your father, who's your father? Who's your father? Who's your father? It's God, he knows you need it and he will do it for you. Let's, let's move forward. Move. Let's read another scripture. Yes. I just want to jump some scriptures which does not make sense. Colossians 3 verse but 2. Colossians 3. We know this verse. Let's say it. I will show you another verse. Also write it. Philippians 3 verse 30. Also 3 verse 30. 3 verse 30. Set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above. The heavenly things, not the things that are on earth, which have only temporary value. You are worrying about oh, my car. Oh, your car is having temporary value. Oh, I don't have a job. I don't have a good job. Temporary value. Set your mind unto God. My God will do it. You begin to have faith in him. Listen, faith. To you it brings eyes to see what is beyond. What God has planned for you. God's plan for you is to give you future and hope. You are not here to fall. You are not here to go down. There is future here and So set your mind on him than on the things that you cannot do. He himself, he will do that for you. He will do that for you. I, I just found that when you start to have enemies, the devil wants you to talk about them. Set your mind on them. When you start to have problems, you set your mind on them. Remove your mind. And speak the scriptures. Your identity in the Lord. What God says about you. God says you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. They are fighting you. You already conquered them. They are defeated because the Lord is with you. Now listen to this. They look like they are going forward and you are left behind. But the Bible says you are the head and you are not the tail. The blessing, the true blessings are coming. They will make you on top, to be on top. It looks like you are behind but you are coming to be on top. If you are hearing me say So now you don't worry why they are, they are Ahead no, of me. No, speak the scripture. The Lord says in the word, I'm the head. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. Someone asked me and said, Why are you not using something? Why you are the only one who's on top of the Why thing? You're not worshiping my God. The God that you're worshiping is small. If you, you are worshiping a God, that you, you drink water and pour on you. You drink water and cool. And from there, the, the, the children come there. And play on top of God. What kind of God is that? He will be defeated soon. But let me prophesy someone who's facing challenges. I want to say, worry not. Because this week, victory is coming to you. I say, you're about to be the head. The Lord will do something. Something that you have been waiting for. Let it come double. Let it come triple. Let success be your portion. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Just help your God. 
by worrying more because if you carry on worrying, you make him small. You have doubted him. When you worry, you are doubting him. Look at that verse I was saying, Philippians 3, verse 30, brothers and sisters. Paul was saying, brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made, my, I have made it on my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and reaching forward what is ahead, what lies ahead? Is Paul was saying this scripture we know it. Paul says, hey, it's not that I don't have problems. And it's not that I'm proud of what I have achieved. But I've already forgotten when you are looking on what I have. When I'm, you are looking on what I'm facing, I've forgotten. I'm looking ahead. You're a child of God who was supposed to look yes, at the so present. Present. present time, present situation. Look ahead. That's what I say, my friend. You have been looking around you. Look forward where you are going. You are not a failure. Stop worrying, you are not a failure. You can still overtake those who are in front of you. You can still move forward and do your better careers. You can study, you can still study. You can still study. You can still study. You know, uh, I don't know what happened, but today, this morning, I was thinking about me and my mom, I was thinking, what if we study law? Uh, because I, I was just thinking about it. Me and my mom, we studied a degree of law. I says, maybe it will help us and help our English. Our English is very much broken. We've been breaking a lot. Sometimes we, we bring past why? Because I was seeing that God has given abilities to all of us here. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. I don't know if you hear me. Don't just sit down. Don't just sit down. Be a child of God. Do something small and see if God won't take you forward. I was hearing my wife say, ah, I think it was one year, two years when we were taking with Dr. Green. She said she wants to study midwifery. How can she do it? Because there's issue of operations. So if now she can do that and study this, she can help. We Christians, we need to do something. We stop worrying. We stop questioning. I don't know if you're hearing me. I answer your friend. But we don't talk about the Kenya. My church is so small; it's not even growing. Things are not happening. Everything is just standing still. But I want to tell you something that go and observe it. This is naturality I want to tell you. When you start to worry, your body becomes heavy. You break things. You break things. When you sleep in a bed, you, you can break the bed. Boom. You sit on a chair, you break it. When you are still holding a cup and you are drinking tea, it falls down. Because your, your, your attention is divided or and you are heavy. You cannot handle things. Check that. Well, 
You, you are breaking things. Sometimes even the decisions that you take concerning, concerning your finances, you are just breaking your finances. You find that you don't know what you are doing. You are just losing everything. Allow everything to be a light today. You will succeed this year. I say you will succeed this year. If you are we say amen. Look at this verse. This verse, we look at it, but we talk about it, but we don't. Psalm 23. Let's read 4 to 6. 4 to 6. Our time is about to be finished here. Amen. Let me say, it's finished. can you just read that verse? It says what? Psalm 23, 4. Yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen. Amen. This verse, you sing it. Verse You are always worrying and have fear. Worry brings fear. Oh, bilela oti sa uchaba. David say, me, I don't even worry. I don't have fear. I can walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Let's stop worrying now. The Lord is involved. I said the Lord is involved. I want to show you this scripture we read with close. Hebrews 13 Are you there? Hebrews 13 6. It says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Did you hear that verse? We have boldness. And we can say, I do not have fear. The Lord is my help. What will man do to me? You know, there is why we always think about people. Who are, who are worrying, worrying. Worrying. Hey, I wanted money, didn't hey, get hey, it. Hey, hey, you are worried. Stop worrying. Worry not. No man can do to anything to you. I want to tell you who are working. I'm giving the people who are oppressing you two months to change. This man cannot do anything to you. This woman cannot do anything to you. The Lord is the one who is on your side. Worry not about them. Worry not. Last time I told you that uh, I, I wish you can go and do this. If you have got someone who is oppressing you, because you know God is looking at your ways, call that person. And say, sir, there's something I wanted to tell you. And I don't want this thing to happen to you. I love you. Whoever oppressed me dies. Whoever oppressed me. Oh, There's something in me that you I don't want you to die. If you can just say, tell that person. Did you hear what I said? Sir? I wanted to tell you that. When you are sitting there, that man Thank God that person told me. Because I didn't know this person. People are using things. People are using things. But this might be very dangerous. I don't want to play with that person. After one week, go there. You will see the way it treated. How are you? Are you working well? 
go back and say, uh, why I told you that thing? It's, it's long I've been working with you. It's like that thing that I was telling you is about to happen. So when is my promotion? You, you relax. You don't know your God. These people are pressing you by a charm. And you are afraid of a charm. They are choosing you, taking you up and down. You say, when is it going to be my promotion? He says, because I am see this thing is like. You just have no next next you must listen to what he says. The confidence of being a manager, of what manager will go. And you'll find that you have overcome. God is waiting for you to talk. Whoever say to this mountain and believe, it shall happen to him. Stop worrying, say something. God bless you, God bless you.